Hello, welcome back. My name is Christian Martinson here with Dr. James Spencer and we are going to be discussing a little bit about some wisdom and poetry books here of scripture. So we're going to start uh, with Job um, and James. Um, give me a little bit of uh, some general feedback on talking about wisdom literature. Uh, what does wisdom literature mean? How is it used in scripture? That sort of thing. Well, wisdom literature really refers to the books Job, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and then sometimes Song of Solomon is thrown in there, but really Song of Solomon is a separate sort of genre. Mm. I tend to keep it separate from wisdom literature. Um, but when we refer to wisdom literature, what we're talking about is that sort of Israelite literature that is dealing with um, more of a uh, practical concern within Israelite life, usually involves references to God and creation, um, God and obviously wisdom. It features prominently uh, concepts of the fear of the Lord, yeah. and so a, a lot of the um, a lot of the particulars are related to the content of wisdom literature and how things are presented. But if you think about the books that I even just mentioned, Job, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes, mm -hmm. they're they're vastly different. I mean, anybody yeah. who reads them wouldn't necessarily associate them together, but um, nice. their characteristics really do um, bring them together. No, that's very good. Very good point. Um, looking at Job specifically here, taking a few minutes, um, obviously the most um, kind of obvious scenario that people look at the book of Job is the subject of suffering comes up. Um, is that a good way to approach Job? Uh, and how would you kind of maybe steer us in the right direction? Uh, you know, I think it's an okay way to approach Job. Um, I, I think that the discussions about God and human suffering um, have tended to dominate um, discussions of the book of Job. Um, there is obviously some relevance. You know, Job is pictured throughout the book as the righteous sufferer. Um, but I think there are a couple things to keep in mind um, to sort of broaden that perspective um, as you approach the book of Job and try to read it. Mm -hmm. The first is the, this idea of the retribution principle. Mm -hmm. The retribution principle basically says that um, if I'm good all the time and I obey God's law all the time, I'll have blessings. If I'm if I'm bad and I disobey God, I can expect retribution. I can I can expect to be punished. And um, there was an ancient Near Eastern view that God worked more mechanistically, mm -hmm. um, you know, almost like a machine. And as as the machine um, did bad things, then God would punish uh, those bad things. As the machine did good things, then God would bless those good things. Mm. And and we sort of know from our experience that. Um, that's not exactly the case, you know. Even when we read other wisdom right. literature, like the Psalms, or excuse me, the Proverbs, you know, we see sort of these generalities of the evil will be punished, and the good will will, will um, receive the blessing of God. But in our experience, we don't always see that. Right. And so, um, as we read the Book of Job, we need to be cognizant of the retribution principle as well. And, and this comes out fairly clear in, in actually um, Job one. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, it's talking about what Job does, just in case his sons have sinned. Yeah. It says, uh, when, the, when the days of their feasting were finished, Job would send them, send for them and sanctify them. Uh, speaking of uh, uh, the sisters, and then he, he would get up early in the morning and offer burnt offerings, according to the number of them all. Mm -hmm. For Job thought, perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's customary practice. Usually that, that verse was referred to to show how full of integrity Job was, mm -hmm. um, but it may also denote that he's really concerned that he get ahead of God's punishment. Sure, sure. So if his, if his children have sinned, he wants to take care of that even preemptively, just in case. Sure. Um, so you, you know, you're seeing these reflections of retribution theology in Job. I think the second thing to understand about the book of Job is that the topic of the book of Job really isn't human suffering. Um, while human right. suffering occurs in the book, um, if you read the first chapter with Satan's accusations, um, what you're really seeing is an accusation against God. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a question of whether or not God is actually worthy, uh, regardless of what you have. Mm -hmm. And that's how this whole thing starts out. Satan is actually telling God, listen, I bet if you took X, Y, and Z away from Job, he wouldn't worship you anymore. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't fear you anymore. Mm -hmm. And so that's how Job sort of gets sucked into the cycle. So really the book of Job is about a justification of God's worthiness. 
Mm-hmm. It's about uh, declaring that God is actually worthy. Mm-hmm. And so when we start thinking through suffering, um, I think what we have to understand is broadening that out to human experience. Yeah. In other words, God is worthy in suffering, just as God is worthy in plenty. Sure. And, and we see both those movements, actually, in the book of Job. We sure. see him with plenty, but we also see him with essentially nothing. Sure. And then he, return, he returns to having plenty. Right. And, and, and you see his view of God and, and the way he experiences God change throughout the book. Yeah. And so when I, when I sort of approach the book of Job, I think through it in terms of human experience of God as opposed to just suffering. Yeah. Although suffering is absolutely a legitimate uh, theology to pull from Job. How would you kind of relate back to uh, an earlier mini lecture that we did talking about how we read scripture over and against ourselves? Meaning, uh, in this scenario, we often take our human experience of suffering, and then we see that the element of suffering touched on in Job, and it can easily become the main thing that we use that book for, rather than focusing on essentially what you just said, um, what is actually the message of Job. Well, I, I think sometimes actually we fall into this retribution principle without even thinking about it. Yeah. Um, we may not have a you know that strict sense of if I do something bad, God is going to punish me sort of thing to it. But in, in reality, I think we do think that if we're good, God is going to bless us, and if we're bad, God is going to discipline us. Mm-hmm. Which you know, in, in a broad sense, is is very true. You know, I think mm-hmm. that if we're righteous to the end, if we're obedient to the end, if we're faithful to God to the end. Um, you know, thanks to Christ's sacrifice, we will reap that righteousness and that peace that's, that's promised in the in the eschaton. And, sure. and in a lot of ways, I think that we can uh, experience that now. Sure. But I, I think often we we do this to ourselves. You know, we, we kind of um, look and we say, oh, bad things are happening to us. I wonder what happened to me. Right. You know, what did I do? Um, right. How does this work? And I, and I think instead of doing that, um, instead of, of setting our own goals and our own trajectory for where God would take us, you know, um, if God really loved me, he would give me, you know, a $50 million house and, and, <laughs> and ample money. Um, <laughs> I think that we need to experience God where he has us yeah. and, and really, really take this example of Job and say, wow, Job had no idea what was happening to him. Yeah. I, I mean, throughout the whole book, he has no idea why this is happening to him, but he stays true. He, mm-hmm. he, he continues to say, I don't know why this is happening to me, but I know why. It's, I I know that I didn't do anything to cause it. Right. right. You know, his claim that he has full of integrity is really um, what he holds on to through the whole book. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, that's a great point. Um, just to finish this concept of Job, I thought um, oftentimes we look at someone like Job, those of us that are born again Christians living in a new covenant, and we sometimes separate ourselves, um, or we don't separate ourselves, looking at Job, someone living in the Old Covenant, to ourselves, and we kind of make a, try to make a direct correlation with his life to our life, and oftentimes we don't take into account the work of Christ. How, how would you then say a, a, a Christian here living in the, the New Covenant in the year 2012 is to look at the life of Job and essentially understand that element when you, when you try to make associations into the life here with Christ in the New Covenant? Yeah, I think you still have to look at it uh, from a comparative standpoint. Um, so in other words, you know, Job does express something of human experience regardless of what covenant we're under. Yep. Um, obviously, Christ's sacrifice changes things. Right. Um, you know, in Christ we have um, the promise of the Holy Spirit, or through Christ we have the promise of the Holy Spirit, um, which has given us to uh, work in us and help us and empower us in a way that um, Old Testament saints didn't really experience all the time. In, in the Old Testament, the Spirit works in a, in a much more uh, temporal fashion. In other words, he's there and then he's gone. He, he comes mm-hmm. on person for the time and leaves. And, and so for us, we have a, a continued, um, I, I want to say continued access, but it is really a continued access, an immediate access to God in a way that um, it doesn't appear, at least the Bible doesn't present, that Old Testament saints had. Yeah. So I think that's one big difference, but from a comparative perspective, you know, like Job, we still live in a fallen world. Mm-hmm. Uh, like Job, um, we still have an accuser, um, and, and like Job, we may have to go through trials for reasons that we don't understand. Um, you know, the big difference.
is we now have an advocate at the throne. Yep. Uh, and so we have to take those things into account. So uh, I, I think that there are still lessons to be drawn from Job. Uh, I think primarily what we need to do is, um, you know, have a view of our own integrity, mm. recognize that we don't fully understand God or what we're experiencing with him, but trust that at the end of the day, whatever I have to go through, it, it's actually worth it because God is worth it. Sure. That's excellent. Okay. Um, we're going to pause there for now, and we're going to continue this discussion here on, uh, on poetry, uh, getting into the Psalms a little bit. We thank our audience for dealing with some of the, the L track noise, and uh, we've got Dr. Spencer on the phone here. So uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll continue this uh, next piece shortly.